Hey, what's up everyone? I think I have a pretty cool topic for you this week because we are going to see how it's possible to write a test that will make sure that an object has indeed been correctly deallocated from memory. And to achieve this goal, we're going to have to write some code. So let's get started immediately. As you can see, I've written the signature of a new method inside XC test case. And as the name of this method suggests, its goal is going to be to assert that an object created through the closure we pass as an argument has indeed been successfully deallocated from memory. And here's how I'm going to implement this method. First, I declare a local variable, which is a weak reference to an instance of type T. And just after that, I'm going to create something that's called an auto release pool. And I think there's a very good chance that you are not familiar with what an auto release pool is. So let me explain it in a nutshell. Basically, an auto release pool is something that used to be very useful in iOS back in the days where we had to manage the memory by ourselves. And you can basically understand it as a local context of memory in which we can allocate objects that will then be deallocated when that context is closed. And so inside this context, I will allocate the object using the closure given as an argument. I'm going to store it in a local variable. Then I'm also going to store a weak reference to this same object in my other local variable. And finally, I'm going to assert that at this point in my code, my weak reference to my object is not nil, which makes sense because at this point in my code, I still have my local variable object, which holds a strong reference to the instance. And now, as you can imagine, there is only one thing left to add to complete the implementation of my test, and it's to make sure that once the auto release pool has been drained, the weak reference to my object has indeed become nil. But as you're going to see, to implement this last part, we're actually going to have to write quite some code. So first, I'm going to introduce an expectation that will be fulfilled once we reach the end of the auto release pool. And if you've never used an expectation, in a nutshell, it's just a way to tell our test to wait for an event to happen in order to resume its execution. So now I just need to write the code to actually tell my test to wait for the expectation to be fulfilled. And for that, I need to use the method wait of XC test case. So it looks like this. I say wait for my expectation to fulfill and I give it a timeout of 10 seconds. And finally, I need to use the same approach to make sure that after a few seconds, my weak reference to my object has indeed become nil. And in order to implement this, I'm going to have to introduce a helper method. So there it is. As you can see, there is quite a bit of code inside of it, but the core ID is actually pretty simple. As you can see, the signature is quite similar to the method I used to wait for my expectation to be fulfilled, except that this time I'm going to wait for a condition to become true. And so what's happening inside the method is that until the timeout has been reached, I'm going to regularly try to evaluate my condition. And in the end, I'm going to assert whether or not the condition finally managed to become true before the timeout expired. And with this helper method implemented, I can now write the last line on my test method. And this line is to wait for the weak reference to become nil with a timeout of three seconds. And now that the method has been implemented, now it's time to actually give it a try to see if it can indeed detect memory leaks. So I've pasted the code of a very simple couple of classes. As you can see, class A has a reference to an instance of class B, and class B also has a reference to an instance of class A. And of course, what's super interesting with this simple class hierarchy is that by simply removing this unown here, I can create a retain cycle in memory, and so a memory leak that my test will be able to detect. So let me put the unown keyword back, and let me actually write the code for the test. As you can see, this code is pretty simple. I simply call assert deallocation, and I say I want to assert that this instance of A has indeed been correctly deallocated from memory. With the code I've implemented right here, it should indeed be the case. So let's actually run the test and see whether or not it passes. And as we can see, my test was indeed successful. Now, of course, we want to move on to the more interesting case, which is we want to voluntarily introduce a retain cycle and we want to run the test once again to see whether or not this time it will indeed detect the memory leak. So let me run the test and we're going to see what happens. And as you can see, it indeed worked just as expected because this time our test 
is failing because our test successfully detected that there is a memory leak because after the autorelease pool had been drained, the instance of A was still alive in memory even though it definitely shouldn't have been at that point. Now before we end the video, I want to give you a very important word of caution regarding this approach. And for this, I'm going to go back to the code of my method assert deallocation. As you can see from the signature of this method, it's quite generic because it's actually going to work with just any kind of classes. And if you were thinking to use this method in order to test whether or not a view controller was leaking in memory, this high level of genericity is actually going to become an issue. Because as you can see here, the only thing I'm doing in my test is to actually construct my object. But in the case of a view controller, this wouldn't actually be enough. Because for a view controller, most of the memory allocation actually happen in other places than the init. They're going to happen in methods like load view, view did load, view will appear, basically all the methods that implement the life cycle of a UI view controller. And if you were to use this method right here to test whether or not a view controller was deallocated, all these methods wouldn't actually be called, which would highly reduce the relevance of the test. But of course, it's totally possible to implement an overload of asset deallocation for the special case of testing whether or not a view controller was deallocated. And to get the code for this specific overload, I've put the link to a great article from Antoine van der Lee in the description. And I can only recommend that you go check it out because inside this article, Antoine one has written all the code necessary to test whether or not a view controller is leaking from memory. And this time we've reached the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed this explanation of how we can write a test that will assert whether or not an object has been successfully deallocated from memory. And I really hope that this new approach is going to help you improve the level of quality of your apps. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time.